This video is about the Vesper theory. You should already be able to draw Lewis structures for any compound and identify its polarity, but we're also going to cover shape and bond angles. The question in the video is, if these exist, what are their shapes and polarities? So with the Vesper theory, it means valence shell electron pair repulsion. It's basically saying that the structure of the molecule is determined by reducing electron repulsion between pairs, making them as far apart as possible so that they don't, the pairs don't repel each other. So when you're determining the shape, the double and triple bonds shouldn't matter. They can count as single bonds. You can use any resonant structure that shouldn't make any change. And if there's no central atom, we're not classifying it as a shape right now. So those organic things we saw last year, not shaping those right now. Um, there are f five basic shapes. If every single thing is bonded within the atom, these are the five shapes it could be. A linear shape where there's only two bonds. Planar shape where there's only three bonds, tri trigonal meaning three. Four is the prefix tetra, tetrahedral meaning there's four bonds all together. Five bonds would be trigonal bipyramidal. That kind of makes sense because tri plus bi means five. And then oddly enough, octahedral for six. And when we create the models, you might be able to see that octahedral has eight sides. That's why it's called that, but it only has six bonds. So if we look at a picture of this, and maybe you can sketch this out in your notes, linear objects have uh, bond angles of 180. The um, other adjacent atoms are 180 degrees away from each other, so that their electrons in the bond are as far away from each other as possible. For trigonal planar, this molecule is flat, like flat on your desk when you create the model. And at angles would be 120 because um, the entire thing might create a, like a circular pattern. And that means each one of these have to be 120 degrees away from each other to make that 360 degree circle. So there's a, these bonds are 120 degrees away from each other so that they repel the least. Tetrahedral puts in another bond and that's why the bond angle gets smaller at 109.5. From there, tetrigonal bipyramidal is another bond, so it's even smaller. There are actually two different types of bonds in here. The bonds that are at the same place that the trigonal planar was, and so they are at 120 degrees away from each other. And then a bisection of that trigonal planar. So that means that there are also 90 degree angles between the bisection and the trigonal planar part. And last, there's octahedrals, and those are bond angles of 90 degrees. You're not going to see bond angles less than 90 because then the repulsion is too strong. So now we have to talk about how that there's actually other shapes when you start having lone pairs. The lone pairs create these other off shapes. So again, we had linear where there were two bonding domains, two places for bonds, like CO2. Remember, it doesn't matter if it's single or double period bonds. And so we called that linear. For trigonal pyramidal um, planar, if all three of them are bonded, like in BF3, then they're 120 degrees away from each other and there's no lone pairs. But if you're talking about something like nitrogen, when it bonds with oxygen, nitrogen dioxide, there's going to be two bonding pairs, a double and a single bond, but there's also going to be a lone pair on the top. That means it's no longer trigonal planar because that would require a bond going up. This is called bent because it literally it looks like a bent molecule from water, but notice it will still be at 120 degrees because the actual placement of the other two bonds have not changed. For the tetrahedral set, we talked about this set in year one, right, last year. So something like C um, H4 or CCL4 in this picture can be modeled like this, but it really the electron clouds are kind of almost overlapping, right? So when you kind of pull it and expand it, what you can see is there's four bonds, that would be tetrahedral. But if you take one of those bonds away and add a lone pair, that would be called trigonal pyramidal. Not planar, because planar would be flat. Notice this red bump is a little higher than the gray areas. And then if you take another one away, we get our normal bent that we talked about last year, like water. So here's it, here it is again in the table. Um, tetrahedral, when it has all bonded and formed uh, four bonds, will be named tetrahedral. But if it has three bonded and one unbonded, it's still in the tetrahedral group, but we call it pyramidal. And if it has two bonds, but two of them are lone pairs, which means like, we're removing bonds as we go, this is like water. It's still part of the tetrahedral team, but it's bent like water. The team, the next team we're talking about is bipyramidal. If you have five bonding domains, they're all bonded. An example is PCL5. This is called trigonal bipyramidal. Triangle in the, the one section and then a bisection of that triangle. If you take one of those away, those bonds away, you'll have a lone pair at that side like SF4 would have. And that lone pair has to go at the 120 degree angle so it's as far away from the bonded ang uh, electrons as possible. This creates something called a seesaw shape and you'll see why it's called that when we make it in class. Next, we'll remove another pair of electrons, and we'll get T-shaped. And last, we'll, we'll remove a third pair of electrons, and we'll get just the bisection. So we're removing the electrons from the trigonal planar section 
because they are 120 degree angles away from one another and those electrons are repelling each other so they need to be as far away as possible. Make sure you're taking notes and pausing the video. Our last set is octahedral. In octahedral, if all six bonds are there, you get SF6 or, or an octahedral particle. But if any of those bonds were removed, so there's just a lone pair there, like in BRF5, that would be square pyramidal. The square is coming from the lower four Bs, making a square, and then the pyramidal because there's another B going straight up from that. So it's a 3D molecule. And our last one is called square paraplanar because we take the other um, bond off exactly 180 degrees away from their initial bond. That means all you have is a square, and that square is flat. These two are just imaginary placements of electrons, right? So we say planar because it's flat. So just in review, if it has one or two atoms in there, one or two bonds, it's linear. If it has three bonds, it's planar at 120. If it has three bonds but one of them is missing, it's bent at 120. Notice the angles did not change for that group. For the tetrahedral group, again, the angles are always 109.5 until you get to linear because now you only have two atoms. Same thing here. For bipyramidal things, whether they're bipyramidal, C, or T shape, their angles stay at 90 and 120 until you get to linear at 180. And for the last team of sixes, the octahedral team, they have bond angles at 90 the whole time. So a couple of questions are, remember if we have two bonds, what's the difference between something being linear and something being bent? Or if you have three bonds, it could be planar, pyramidal, or T-shaped. What's the difference? Lone pairs. So in linear, the carbon does not have any lone pairs. So it's straight across. There's nothing repelling. But in bent, the sulfur will have lone dots on the top. It will push the bonds down to make this bent structure. Similarly, in trigonal planar, there are no lone pairs, so the bonds straighten out and spread out. But in pyramidal, there's a lone pair on nitrogen, just one. And in T-shape, there are two lone pairs. So each time you add a lone pair, the bond angle between them gets smaller. So back to the question in the video, if these exist, what's their shape? These are completely bonded with five bonds, so this is trigonal and bipyramidal. And this is completely bonded with six bonds, so this is octahedral. At this point, you should be able to draw Lewis structures to determine their shape and bond angles.